South Africa and the Pasaki Station lab from Kyoto. So in this paper, we aim to, by using some very simple um, qubit model to understand the relationship between like random and, and chaos. So why chaos is kind of interesting is because for the classical chaos has been around us for a long, long time. For example, in a smaller system of double rod pendulum, it exhibits some kind of um, chaotic behavior. And in a more daily experience, we have the weather forecasting, which is also chaotic due to the nonlinearity of the of the um, hydrodynamics governing um, the movement of water or air. And one of the um, features of chaotic system is that if we look at the trajectory of some particles uh, denoted by this uh, x of t, with respect to its initial condition, if you vary the initial condition a little bit, then after some time t, it will diverge exponentially quickly. And that this is the uh, features of these classical chaotic systems. And this, the classical case has been studied for a long, long time, and is relatively well understood. But what about the quantum case? So by quantum chaos, we just mean how we can use a more fundamental theory, for example, quantum mechanics or quantum field theory to understand how could chaos arise classically. Because we know in quantum mechanics, it's all governed by Schrodinger equation, which is linear, which lacks the, uh, the criteria of being non-linear. There are two main um, tools to, to classify or to quantify this um, quantum chaos we, um, defined, we, uh, which is um, believed to be a good measure of, of this quantum chaotic um, behavior. The first one is called the out, out of time order correlator. I will I'll explain in the next page, uh, next page with what, what it is. And the next, uh, the other one is the random matrix theory. And in that case, in this paper, we focus on the spectral for, uh, sorry, uh, the spectral form factor of, of, of the qubit models and see like what uh, what we can get out from some numerical computations. In the random matrix theory, also also come with some level spacing distribution, which also tell us some information about whether the quantum system is chaotic or not. So first, we'll uh, briefly mention what is an out of time order correlator. Is defined in this way. So, given some operator W and U in your quantum system, and we compute the commutator of these two operators, and um, notice that the, one of the operators is put in time t, and the other is some reference time, which is normally set as zero. And we take the square of this commutator and then average over the thermal ensemble of that quantum system. And it's believed that if the system is chaotic, then it will grow as an exponential 2 times the some constant times t, which is kind of very similar to the classical chaos k. And in order to understand this two, uh, the relation of the out of time correlate, out of time order correlator with the classical chaos, um, it's better to just focus on the more simple case of quantum mechanics. So, Consider we have only two operators, the positions and the momentum operator. And then if we compute the commutator of this, um, t op these two operators put by putting the x operator at time t and then p at zero, then we see that it comes out at i times the delta x of t over delta x of zero, which is kind of the measure of the classical chaos. And since we are doing some averaging of some thermal example, we, we simply just take the square of this to make sure that everything comes out to be uh, positive. And back in 2016, uh, these three um, researchers uh, compute this um, out of time order correlator and then they propose that they observe some uh, very interesting features that in the quantum chaos case, there is, it seems to be a maximum bound for quantum chaos. Uh, governed by these two pi uh, kb, KB over beta h bar, which is not which is not true in, in the classical chaos case where there's no such a bound. Like, at least there's no people have not found such a bound for the classical chaos case. 
And since in this paper we only focus on the more random matrix part, I, I'll, I'll spend more time on this. So we know in quantum system, everything is probabilistic. Like you compute expectation value on some operators and, and study the properties of this system by using some averaging. And back in 1955, uh, Wake proposed the idea to study the spectra of heavy nuclei. So if you um, look at the nuclear data book and then take out all the heavy nuclei with the same, uh, the state of the eigenstate of the heavy nuclei with the same quantum number, and then try to calculate the statistics of those um, energy levels, and you will find that the distributions or the um, the statistic of those eigenstates will follow what was given by the random matrix theory. And that's how we first start to, to use this random matrix theory to study um, the statistic of some systems. And in order to understand or to, to get some idea of why this random matrix theory will tell us anything about um, classical chaos, one of the more uh, strong evidence is that if we look at some um, this media system where we have a rigid box and we put uh, some obstacle, some cylinder in the middle of this um, box and then study how the trajectory of, of the balls here, uh, the trajectory of this ball bouncing around this system. And classically, it has been shown that this system exhibits the chaotic feature where the feed shift the dislocation of the force, the initial position of this force a little bit, then the trajectory after some time t will deviate exponentially quickly. And since this is a very simple system, you can also uh, study the quantum version of this. So then the quantum version would just be where some infinitely high potential well, uh, wall surrounding this square, and then there's a, also an infinite wall in the middle, and then we can solve for this system. And you also found that the spectrum of this, the quantum version of this EDS system follows a random matrix theory. And Professor Hashimoto here, uh, back in 2017, has also studied quite a, a wide range of this BDS system and then compute both the classical spectrum and the quantum spectrum. Although they, they study the OTOC, in this, the out of time order correlator um, in their paper, but if you're interested in how, how the relation of this quantum is um, the classical version, please refer to this paper. So now we'll move on to how uh, or what quantities in the random matrix theory can tell us anything about um, quantum chaos or how we, we believe to, to be a good tool to study quantum chaos. One is to compute the spectral form factor. And the spectral form factor is defined to be the square of the partition function uh, with a time dependent. So normally the partition function is just e to the minus b to h. And here we introduce some time um, evolutions to the, to the partition function, some time dependent of the partition function. And then we take the square and then normalize by the initial value of this partition function. And if you expand this, if you just plug in h by, by the um, corresponding eigenvalues of the system, then, we, then you will see that this g of t, or the spectral form factor, is telling us information about the correlation between different eigenvalues in the system. So for example, um, one part coming out from this g of t by substituting h by the, by the eigenvalue would be exponential i, t times the difference between eigenvalues. And this is one example of the result coming out from uh, this spectral form factor. And this, this picture came from uh, this paper, where um, Masaki is also one of the authors in this paper. So here they, they study a SYK model, which I will briefly mention um, later on. So they compute a spectral form factor and then obtain this curve. And the first part of the of the graph is kind of expected from, from any any system because um, different eigenvalues evolve at a different phase. So 
as that, we align the, the different eigenvalues, uh, eigenstate, and then as it evolves, there is a phase difference. So, so then the spectral form factor will decay. And this part is what uh, tell us about what is special about the random matrix or what believed to be a chaotic um, features of, of this quantum system. So due to the correlation between um, the eigenstate in, in a chaotic system, then that would, the correlation would goes back up and then it flattens out at the, at the constant value at rate time. So then from that, people believe that if we see this um, special features for, uh, for, a for a quantum system, then we can say this could be a quantum uh, chaotic system. So we'll use these uh, special features of this spectral form factor to, to test a, a simple qubit model. So, uh, and one of the simple models that we will study is the SYK model. It, it has a very long history, but recently Kitai proposed uh, the relation of this. Uh, Propose that this model can be can be used to uh, study quantum chaos and also holography. So the generalized SYK model is given by this form, where there, there are two numbers here. One is Q and one is M. So this Q here just tells us how many fermions are interacting in, in, in your hyperfermion, and this N is the number of, number of fermions in your system. And all those all those sides here are Majorana fermions which satisfy this uh, anti-computation relation. And the J here, J with all those things that I, I want up to IQ uh, are random. By random, I just mean uh, when we do the calculation, we draw from a sample of Gauss, uh, a Gaussian distribution with this uh, choice of variance. And the most famous example, the most studied case of this uh, generalized that's why I came out with the Q equal to 4 k so we have 4 uh, fermion interacting. And if by, by doing analytical calculation in large A or by mean view approach, it can be shown that um, this SYK4 model is chaotic. And there has been a lot of study of um, the spectral form factor or OTOC of this particular SYK4 model. But our focus is more simple. We, are, we would like to study a much more simpler case, which is just the Q equal to two case, which means we are only having uh, bilinear fermions in the hypertonian. And as before, we, we, are all, we only have Majorana fermions here. And then we introduce some random coupling with this particular um, Gaussian distribution. Since this is bilinear in fermion, we can simply integrate uh, of this Hamiltonian in the, in the partition function. We can, we can solve this model exactly. And since this is um, exactly solvable, um, then it shouldn't be chaotic. So we would like to see, we would like to compute the spectral form factor or some relevant uh, quantity and see what is the difference between the spectral form factor coming out from these integrable models and the SYK4 model, which is chaotic. So this is the, uh, the left hand side is the result from our computation and the right hand side um, comes from the SYK4 models um, computation came from this paper. So let's first look at the SYK4 result. So as the random matrix, as the example that I saw before, the spectral form factor first uh, start with zero, which is by, by the normalization it starts at zero. And then as time, as it evolves, then it, the correlation of the spectral form factor decay quickly. And then after some point, then there's a linear increase in the, in the correlation and then it flattens out. And it's true for, from the check on the numerics from n equal to 16 up to n equal, n equal to 34. In order to eliminate the possibility of having numerical errors, uh, the, the finite size uh, degree of freedom error. And you see they all follow this feature where it first decrease and then there's a linear increase and then it flattens out. 
And there's some slight subtleties in, in the difference between different types. You can see there's some smooth corner, some sharp changes, and then there's a little bump here. It's all due to uh, the statistic or the, the properties of the random matrix, but we'll not talk about this in details here. And then next we can move on to this uh, SYK2 result, which we compute in our paper. So here we, we check the result from n equals to 8 up to n equals to 24 in this, in this graph. And we can see a very similar structure comparing the SYK2 and SYK4 result. So you start with 1, and then it decays quickly, and then there's a linear increase. Uh, modulo those um, numerical errors or from the, from the, from the um, numerical computation, and then it flattens out. So you can see, by just looking at the spectral form factor, these two graphs look uh, essentially the same. They contain similar behavior. Even with the, with the variation of n, the, the changes accordingly here. And this is kind of surprising because originally we thought um, the spectral form factor or, or properties coming out of the random matrix theory to, to tell us a way to distinguish between um, non-chaotic or chaotic system. But when we look at SYK2 system, which is believed to be uh, non-chaotic due to its integral um, properties, and the chaotic system, SYK4, which was shown to be chaotic um, through lots of different um, studies. But when we look at the spectral form factor, they are essentially the same. So just by one observation in uh, computation is that just by looking at the spectral form factor, it seems it's slightly difficult to tell the difference. So maybe it points to us that maybe that's a, we need some modification or some um, other measure to, to, to test whether the system is chaotic or not. And then we also look at the temperature uh, variations of the spectral form factor. So when the when beta is large, we expect the spectral form factor to be just a constant, like it stays as one. And then at at very high temperature, it will, it will solve the uh, when beta equal to zero, then we will see a more more definite um, features in the spectral form factor, and it's shown here. So this gives us some confidence that the numerical is not wrong. Is consistent with what we expect. Although there is some, some slight error at the, at the low temperature limit where it's not exactly one, but, but given, given that uh, accuracy, we're confident that uh, we didn't make any mistakes in that uh, numerical computation. So this, um, decre this decay, linear rise, and then um, flattens out plateau structure is not due to numerical artifacts. And so in order to, to understand why this um, what believed to be a, a measure of quantum chaos um, give rise, how, how these features give rise, um, how, how, does a quant, how does the spectral form factor uh, behave like that? We would like to understand why, why it behave like that just like uh, what we live to be a chaotic system feature. So we look, we also check a very small n, very small degree of freedom uh, system with only n equals to two, so only two Marana fermions and then four Marana fermions. And from this um, calculation, we can see that uh, for n equals to four, the, the decay, linear rise, and then flattens out structure are kind of still uh, observable to some sense, although you, you may argue that it could, it might not be the exactly the feature that we observe for larger n, but at least when we compare the n equals to 2 and n equals to 4 um, plot of the spectral form factor, we see a big difference. So for n equals to 2, simply it just decays and then it stays at some value, it just stays at constant. And this decay is universal for all, all quantum systems due to the phase difference that I mentioned before. <coughs> But for n equal to 4, at least we see up to this point, we can claim it could be a linear rise or it could be just an oscillation. But still, there, there's uh, some 
features are different from the n equals to two. And luckily, the, for the n equals to two case, we can simply uh, use pen and paper to solve that system because it only contains two fermions and it's very simple. If we use, some, use the jordan wigner transformation which map the fermion to a poly matrix, it's just a, the Hamiltonian is just a single poly matrix, which we can solve easily. And the difference between this n equal to two system and other higher n system is that if we look at the eigenvectors of, the, of, the, of this SYK to n equal to two system, the eigenvector is independent of the random coupling which is understandable since after the jordan wigner transformation, the Hamiltonian is just a, the, the third poly matrix sigma set. So the eigenfactor is just either spin up or spin down in that, in that uh, basis, which is then independent of what, what kind of coupling you put in front of the system. But that is not true for general n. So when n increases, then the eigenfactor in general it depends on the on the coupling that you put in, into your matrices or into your in, into your Hamiltonian. And we believe that uh, upon the averaging uh, procedure that we have to do in order to compute this spectral form factor, uh, by averaging over the coupling constant in your system, what effectively it does is that um, we are scanning over a large set of um, eigenvectors or eigenstates, and that for larger n, we are, we, are, we are scanning lots of lots of different eigenstates in the system and that was that's what we believe to be the reason why it generate the, um, the features we observe here for example while for, for the n equal to 2 since the eigenfactor is independent of the coupling even though we do averaging over eigenvalues uh, averaging over the uh, random coupling it will not it will not allow us to scan um, different set of eigenvectors. We are only staying at the spin up, and we are only looking at the spin up and spin down eigenvectors in the system. And we believe that that's the, that's the main, main reason why for n equal to two, we cannot observe uh, the, the special features while for high n, it still persists even though it's an integrable system. So here is a summary of the result that uh, the numerical result that we obtain. So when we look at the SYK2 models and look at the spectral form factor, we saw the same behavior as the SYK4 model, which is believed to be chaotic for at least for the number of degree of freedom larger than two. And in order to check this um, result, we also look at um, different uh, qubit models. For example, we look at the transverse icing models and that also give us some consistent results. So this transverse icing model is just the icing model plus uh, a magnetic field in the in the orthogonal direction, which which give the name transverse. And that model is also exactly solvable. And and so we don't expect if, if the spectral form factor really uh, a good tool to tell us whether the system is chaotic or not, then we expect that we also we shouldn't see the the decay, linear rise, and plateau in that system as well. But upon numerical confirmation, we also see the same, exactly the same result coming out from SYK2. So we believe that uh, it's, a, it's kind of like a general features for, for all the integrable spin systems. And that feature only comes from the averaging over eigenstates instead of um, the, the intrinsic chaotic behavior of the quantum system. And here are just the, 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 the points that I just uh, mentioned. So in order to generate that features of the, of the we call deep grand photon, which is just the decay, linear rise, and then flattens out as a constant value. It is only comes from the averaging over the random coupling constant, which allow us to, to scan many eigenstates. And since n equals two, the, for n equals to two, the eigenvector is independent of that. So we, we, we do not see that feature. We do not see this deep ramp at all. And it suggests us to, to claim that maybe just by looking at the spectral form factor, it's not sufficient. Uh, it's not a sufficient condition to, to diagnose um, chaos. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, it, it seems to me that 
it is not surprising to find a behavior like the random matrix theory in, in this any you model because the way it is defined, it is precisely you start with a random matrix, the, the coupling GIJ, this is right. a random matrix uh, by definition, so it, you embed it in some other phenomenal space. So in the end, yeah, so it's not surprising it. because the model itself is set up as a yeah. random matrix. So why? But the, the surprising thing is that the random matrix theory is believed to be a tool to, to diagnose chaos. And we know SYK2 is not chaotic because it's integrable. But, no, but no. It, it is exactly, it is defined as. Yeah, it's defined as a random matrix. matrix. So we are just saying uh, random matrix, uh, the spectral form factor may not be a good way to tell whether the system is chaotic or not.